Welcome to The Point of View. This is your favorite current affairs show on television. On The Point of View, we pick the right topics, we get the right guests and ask them relevant questions on issues that matter to you. The show is interactive. It's live on CTTV. And if you have a question, because tonight is really a town hall where my guests will be answering your questions on the biggest issue, not just in Ghana, but in the world today, the COVID-19 vaccine. It's going to be very exciting. I have three of the very best people with experience and insight into how these things work to address our concerns about the vaccine. I'll come back and tell you more about them and also how we're going to proceed when we return. Stay with us. Let's take a moment to talk about money. Life can get a little pricey out there. The passing pleasure of a restaurant meal. A fleeting fast food feast. Or those sports magazines you never really finish. But what if you got to watch the big game rather than read about it? And what if that lasted a lot longer? Well, with DSTV, it can. Because with a whole range of different package options to choose from, you can get a whole month's worth of moments for both you and your family at a price you can afford. I am so excited. That's right. Only one in exchange for hours of sport, lifestyle, love is a game of cat and mouse, international, local, and kids entertainment. Let the nerds take over. It's your moment to enjoy all the moments with DSTV. drink keeps you going available in major supermarkets and shops near you excessive drinking can be detrimental to your health not recommended for persons under 18 years lactating mothers pregnant women and people sensitive to caffeine this advert is fda approved Welcome back. So as COVID-19 almost clocks a year in the world, many countries are getting ready to fight it in multiple ways. Of course, to get herd immunity, we will need vaccination, which is a big, big subject. This week, we're expecting the first batch of dosages of vaccines to hit the country. Indeed, uh, Dr. Mponsa Chianu has been telling us more about this, and we'll bring you that interview later on, where he basically says, by the end of this week, Ghana should have taken delivery of almost 700,000 doses of the first batch of AstraZeneca vaccines coming in through the COVAX program. But we want to first show you the concerns that people have been expressing about this vaccine. And then I'll have three of the very best. My guests include Dr. Mercy Ahun. She's a, a Gavi Special Representative in Geneva and a Public Health Specialist. She rose through the ranks for many, many years. She was uh, in charge of the vaccination programs in Ghana. She was later on the Gavi program country manager for over 70 countries. And these days, she's an advisor to the very highest levels of world health. Dr. Ahun, thank you for joining us. Good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me? All right. Good well, evening. Great. Well, Good also, evening. And I'm a, I'm a public health consultant. Fantastic. Thank you for joining us. We also have Dr. Yabidi Akun, who is a research fellow for the West Africa Center for Cell Biology of Infectious Pathogens. Dr. Bedi Aku, thank you for joining us. Good evening. Good evening, brother. Thank you for having me. Brilliant. Earlier today, the Church of Pentecost General Headquarters issued a communique to the Church of Pentecost worldwide, signed by the Chairman Apostle Eric Nyamiche, and it was titled 
communique on COVID-19 vaccines and related myths and controversies. A member of the church's COVID-19 technical team, himself a medical doctor, Dr. Brian Eduard Sarri, is also on the panel. Doc, good evening. Thanks for joining us. Okay, Doc, please put on your, your sound. We can't hear you, but it's good to see you. Your audio is off. Good evening, Thank Doc. Um, I don't know if you can hear me now. We can hear you now. Good evening. Okay, yeah. Good evening. Yeah, so I was saying that uh, I'm actually a pharmacist. You're and, a pharmacist. Um, okay. When I'm we see the word doctor, it sets our mind thinking in different directions. All right. So today we, we went out to ask our ordinary Ghanaians what they thought of the vaccines that were coming in and whether they would avail themselves to take the vaccine or not. Kodro Ajima went to town and this is the report that he came through with. Government has so far approved AstraZeneca vaccines from India and Sputnik V vaccines from Russia for mass immunization in Ghana from March to October 2021. Government is hoping to vaccinate 20 million Ghanaians. The vaccine would be administered in three phases with an individual taking two doses. Health workers, frontline security personnel, persons with known underlying medical conditions, persons above 60 years, and frontline members of the executive, legislature, and judiciary are the categories of people to be given the first shot. How are Ghanaians receiving the news of the COVID-19 vaccine? So with regard to the Sputnik one, so far I've not heard of any um, bad news about it. I think the Russians have started using it in other countries here. And it looks okay. So I would say Sputnik, yeah. The Viva vaccine, um, I think the South Africans started using it. They had some issues. The team should do extensive work. They should do much, much research before they try to bring it out because um, there was a video circulating that as soon as you take the vaccine, part of your body becomes too swollen and all that. So in order to avoid all these um, issues, I think there's much extensive work should be done about it before they try to give it to people. It is a good initiative because definitely uh, Ghanaians in total cannot be vaccinated and we need to start from um, somewhere and then end somewhere. So I think the categories that they have outlined is a step in the right direction because our frontliners need to be protected in order to uh, serve us when we are infected with the virus. So I think it is a step in the right direction. They also had some concerns to share. Let's be a bit cautious about that. The FDA and the Ministry of Health is supposed to ensure that they prove their efficacy. So that, yes, when it comes to it, we will not have any side effects on us. We don't want to take any vaccine there. At the end, it will solve a problem, create another problem for us. But by and large, I would say government proactive steps to ensure that the citizens are protected or uh, somehow their immune system are boosted, it's, it's okay. It's not a bad idea since we've already heard that the Western world, they are already having it. But me personally, I hear that um, when we start this, um, when we start vaccinating people, um, nothing will happen to them instantly, but some years to come, they will start getting the effects. That's what I heard, like after two years, they will start having these effects and it can lead to death yes so well people who are already heard about it like myself you know that definitely we have some panics in taking it dr dixon adomako kisi who has been allaying such fears says there is no need to panic since the vaccine had gone through clinical trial and proven to be safe and effective the companies may be american but as you can see, the production is in India for most of these, uh, you know, things we are, we are hearing. Some are also being produced in Russia. So I wouldn't say that it was just, quote-unquote, a westernized initiative. I know of some few Ghanaian doctors in America who were very much involved because of their history with virology. You know, so if there's a Ghanaian in Maryland supporting Center for Disease and Control, Shall we say that because he's Ghanaian and he's working in America, the benefits are not good for Ghanaians here? No, I wouldn't say that. So I'll beg all Ghanaians should come to the terms that, listen, the production of this virus um, vaccine 
is something that used the minds of people across the entire globe. Government is training over 12,500 vaccinators, 2,000 supervisors, and over 37,000 volunteers to administer the vaccines across the 260 metropolitan municipal and district assemblies. However, the question on many minds is how effective the vaccines will be rolled out. Ghana, our health services is robust in terms of doing vaccination all across the country. Our community nurses are there. And I, I think because we've rehearsed, let me say that we've rehearsed over the years in terms of uh, looking at, for instance, pneumococcal, yellow fever, and all these other things that have come out. We are very well equipped. We have very well trained personnel to handle this. And one critical component, which is the cold chain, is something that we are being trained on severally. And I can assure you that the cold chain will be followed. And more importantly, there's already ongoing training for our health workers who will be handling the vaccination. Back to my conversation with the public, I asked them if they will go for the vaccine. Once I see my president being vaccinated, it will serve as some sort of motivation for me to be vaccinated. Once I see you being vaccinated, I'll get vaccinated. Once I see Bernard Avle being vaccinated, I will also get vaccinated. Let me just say I'm, I'm scared, so I wouldn't do it. Uh, notwithstanding all the education being given out and the publicity and everything. Education has been given out, publicity is ongoing, but to me, first, I don't want to preach fear, but personally, I'm just afraid and I wouldn't want to. Yeah. When it comes out, we don't have a choice. If you really want to kind of live your normal life, you have to go for it, yeah. But we are monitoring closely the effects. So, when it comes in, it need be, yes, I will go for the shot. Hmm. For now, I can't say no or yes. Because you see, as we are in Ghana here, when something is coming up, we all try to condemn it, okay? We say certain things to scare each other. But when it gets to the critics, we all decide to do it. So for now, it's, I'm kind of shaking. But when it comes to a point that we are all supposed to do it, I mean, I have to. Okay, so those were some uh, Ghanaians talking about this uh, vaccine and whether they're taking it or not. In there, we spoke to MP Fanya, who's also a medical doctor, uh, Dr. Aduma Kufisi. Let me start with Dr. Yaobidi Akon. On Thursday, you were on a panel with the Minister for Health, the Information Minister, and the man in charge of this effort, Dr. Kwame Amponsa Achianu, to, to kick off a public education on the vaccines. Were you surprised by what you heard with, with the people we spoke to? There seems to be a fair bit of skepticism mixed with ignorance. I, what do you make of what we just showed? Um, I don't, it doesn't surprise me. I think we have to, we have, a, we have a, a battle on our hands. We're not just fighting the virus. We're fighting a lot of misinformation and, and skepticism. Um, and I think if we, you know, the, 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 the danger is if, if we underestimate the level of skepticism that exists, we set ourselves up for failure. We have to recognize that we have a serious issue with considerable misinformation. I mean, social media does not help us. This is probably the first mass campaign being done in an era of considerable access to social media and a lot of misinformation on social media around the world. Given that it's a global pandemic, you know, social media around the world is fueling a lot of these fears. Mm. So we have a serious issue in this, you know, in, in Ghana. I think, you know, that event I was at sort of kick-starting it, I think is, an, a, is a sign that the government is trying to tackle you know tackle this issue head on mm. but it's going to take more than you know um, a press conference at Alisa hotel to get ordinary <laughs> Ghanaians to take this vaccine we need to and i believe that you know, i've heard some of it in the plan mm. that we need to um focus on the community influences we have to go really to the grassroots mm. and meet people where they are and address the concerns they have um people are genuinely concerned they are scared they may come at it from different points of view uh, but we have to do our best to communicate clearly um, the risks of not getting vaccinated and uh, you know handle the mis misinformation and the misperceptions that may surround okay. um, any perceived risk of the vaccine Doc dr ahun i know you led a, a vaccination effort in ghana many many years ago 
where we, we sort of almost eradicated some of the, the childhood killer diseases. And you've also done this on a global level. Listening to Ghanaians express the kind of skepticism they express in their report, I mean, what was, what, what did, what was your initial reaction listening and watching those Ghanaians talking about this? Well, I mean, um, I, I'm not surprised uh, concerning how um, this disease, this is the first time that we are all facing such a disease which has significantly affected the way that we live. And considering some of the negative stories that we have heard about how the disease came about, it is understandable. And that is why uh, it's so important to continue to do research mm. and find out the beliefs, attitudes of people in the community and then look at how we can work, as Dr. Bediaku said, with key people in the community to address their concerns. In the past, and uh, um, when I was in charge of the pro uh, program, there were various things that we did. We, for example, we did a neonatal tetanus campaign in Western region around Sefiri or so, and before we actually started the campaign, we did the uh, knowledge, attitude, beliefs, and practices uh, study, KBP, to find out what people believe mm. about neonatal deaths. And some of the lessons that we learned is that they don't trust the health system mm. to communicate about neonatal death. They would rather go to a, tr a traditional birth attendant or a chief or, or somebody. So this information is very critical. So as we learn what their concerns are, then we can work with them, not condemning or dismissing their fears, but showing that we walk along to explain things from both a scientific and a human point of view so that they understand that the vaccine is actually to protect them. Thank you. Uh, Elder Dr. Edu Asari, the Church of Pentecost is among the largest churches in Ghana, possibly the second largest apart from the Catholic Church. Why did the church find it necessary to issue a communique on COVID? And in fact, in the communique, you even use words like myths and controversies. Just give me some quick background to why this church decided to do this. All right. Thank you, Bernard. Um, I want to actually greet our rank and file in the church, um, the chairman, the general secretary, and all the leadership. Um, this is because, you know, the Church of Pentecost has done some um, advancements in terms of its position with respect to society. And now we have this um, Vision 2023, which really interfaces a bit more strongly with society. So the social issues are now very important for the church and that um, COVID-19 is a major social issue. And the vaccination has theological implications, has social implications as well. And um, the, the church thought it wise to be proactive to support national efforts to protect the society. And if it would take um, clearing myths that are circulating um, to enhance people to actually uh, behave in such a manner as to comply with some of the things or the interventions that we are doing, then we thought that it was a step in the right direction. I'm reading through the 10 myths you put at the appendix of your statement. And I get the impression that maybe the church feels that wrong teaching and probably wrong preaching could be part of the reason for the skepticism because I'm seeing all kinds of things, including 666 and things. <laughs> in the <laughs> So, I mean, on a general level, does the church, and when I use the church ge generic, does the church feel responsible for part of the vaccine skepticism we have in the world? Okay, so that's an interesting one. Um, the church doesn't feel responsible for the misinformation or aspects of the misinformation. Rather, the church is being proactive to ensure that if there's any misinformation that especially thrives on um, wrong theology, 
then the church would be the entity to, to come in and do the intervention and then set the record straight, especially when it is being used um, against such a social intervention that is supposed to save lives. You see, so uh, these are some of the thinkings behind uh, the communicate. Mm. Um, as time goes on, we can get into a bit more detail. Yeah, let me let me jump it. in before I let, before I come to the full science. And I know you're a pharmacist. Let's deal with some of the things. So, your myth six: you say taking the COVID nineteen vaccine is accepting the mark of the beast, as written in the Bible, Revelations thirteen sixteen to eighteen. There is a widespread opinion that. The 666 beast passage is playing out in our days where a microchip could be introduced into the COVID-19 vaccines to secretly impose it on Christians. Um, I've seen some of this on social media. For it to find its way into your list, it means that even within the church, you, you feel that there are people who, who believe that this is true, that the, 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 the vaccine could be a way of putting 666 through a chip into our bodies. Yes, I mean, our, our members are part of the general society. They are having conversations with people and um, they are interacting, they are sharing ideas and ideas are moving to and fro. You see, so um, it is a way that the church actually protects um, the, 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 the position of the scriptures um, on these matters. Because Bernard, you would um, note for your, I mean, our, our audience would note that that particular myth that was circulating actually has certain underpinning assumptions, which has to be there before we could actually make that claim. And I mean, for instance, for anybody to even think that the vaccine is 666 would mean that, uh, first of all, you are being tricked to receive the, 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 the 666 mark through vaccination because it is being given to you and you are not really uh, there to accept it, but by the time you you are aware, you've taken a 666. So that is one assumption. The second one is that we are actually in the time of the tribulation in the biblical uh, sense of it. And then um, all these things, when you look at it in the, in the light of scripture, uh, it is clear that taking the mark of a bee, of the bees is a deliberate act of worship. You are submitting yourself to the authority or the rulership of the Antichrist. And mm. that is a decision that you take and you cannot be tricked to do that, you see. So this is one of the issues um, that we try to resolve in engaging some of these matters. Mm. Um, of course, it also assumes that then we are in the tribulation as the Bible talks about. Mm -hmm. Tribulation per the scriptures happen after the rapture. Okay, so... Um, and rapture is not a secret thing. It happens. Everybody, all Christians will be aware that it has taken place. You see, so these are some of the thinkings that the church needed to set some of these records straight. So um, does, does, not, the, does the chairman preach about COVID vaccine in church? And will, should we expect on Sunday to hear your pulpits dispel the 666 chip myth in your sermons? If, if it, it becomes necessary for the chairman to set the record straight, there are channels of communication within the church. And the secular that you have seen is one of such. And um, in the wisdom of, of, of the leadership, they have thought it wise to use this particular means um, to actually set the record straight when it comes to these particular uh, theological issues. If in the same wisdom of the leadership, if mm. they feel that, uh, further elaboration would be necessary through um, some articulation on the pulpit or something. Mm. That That is also um, okay. one channel. But what the church is actually against is to have the church platform be used to um, facilitate passing on wrong information or misinformation or fueling uh, the conspiracy theories that um, exist. And I, I would even extend to say that it could be a general principle um, across the Christendom. Just a final one before I, I deal with questions that have come in specifically, still with you. Um, is there some sort of interposition between science and faith where people believe that if God will heal them, they don't need a vaccine, that God will just touch them and that you can just pray for them? Is, is, do I sense some sort of tension among Christians who feel that if they, if, if they pray to God, he does, they don't need a vaccine to be healed? 
you know, <laughs> this is a very um, interesting question because um, biblically, I mean, looking at the scriptures, the the and of course, uh, if you look at the tenets of the Church of Pentecost, you would see that the church is not averse to science, and then it's not also averse to um, medicine and the practice of medicine. And there are there are there are there's evidence in scripture for this, you know. So um, the church sees science as a catalyst. It sees science as mm. Um, something that God can use. It sees science or medicine as something that God can, as a tool. Mm. Uh, God can heal without medicine. God can heal with medicine. So um, there's no conflict um, between the two so far as the church's position um, is concerned. And that is clear in, in the tenets. Okay, let's deal with questions that have come in. And to that, I'll turn first to Dr. Uh, Bedi Aku and also Dr. Ahun. So this morning on my, on my radio show, City Breakfast Show, we got tons and tons of questions uh, from people on, on COVID. Um, I'm just going to put some on the screen and then I'll take your comments if you have any. These are general questions about the vaccine. Uh, there's a question from Samuel in Domi. Hi, City CBS team. Please find out for us if it's true some of the vaccines will change our DNA once administered. If it's true, which of them have been procured using this technology? So I don't know who's going to deal with this one. Um, change DNA once administered. Virologist, <laughs> someone wants to know. Uh, Dr. Bediak, are you there? Yes, do you want us to? I wasn't sure yes. you were reading more questions. No, let me just okay. read. No, it's a serious question. Someone's question from Domi says, find out if it is true that some of the vaccines will change our DNA once administered. It, if so it's the, answer true. Is, the answer is no, it's not true. Um, the, the, the vaccines he's referring to, I think will probably be the, oh, okay. No, go ahead, um, please. Should I answer? Yes, please. So the, the vaccines he's probably referring to are the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines, which contain RNA. Okay. So they're RNA vaccines and a lot of misinformation has gone out about how this RNA could potentially integrate with your, with your DNA. Mm. Um, RNA and DNA, though both genetic material, are not compatible in that way. So RNA is actually very short-lived. Um, it will, it, you know, it's very actually highly unstable on its own. And so it doesn't hang around very long. It would enter, the way the vaccine works is the RNA would enter a cell. It would, it, it would um, be made into protein or mm-hmm. it'd be translated into protein. And then the RNA would no longer persist. The proteins would be produced, which would stimulate the immune system. And then that is really what will induce the immune system to now recognize SARS-CoV-2 if you were to become infected. So there is absolutely no way that an RNA vaccine is going to do anything to your own DNA. That is biologically okay. So, so Samuel from Domi, your question is answered. Let me read a question from Jones, a boy in La. And this, I think Dr. Messi Ahun can answer. He says, good, good day, Bernard. I'm worried about the constant delay in getting the vaccine. If we don't take care, by the time the vaccine gets here, the virus might have developed another strain. So, Doc, is this a genuine fear that if we get the vaccines late, they will probably be solving an older problem because of mutation of the virus? Dr. Ahun, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I mean, mutations are random things. I can, well, first of all, I would say that it's good to hear that somebody wants the vaccine as soon as possible. That is what we want in the public. So that that is a positive thing. And uh, in terms of uh, actually getting the vaccine here, yes, um, we can understand that. I think we have explained the whole process of getting the vaccines and that because you are talking of the whole world and it takes a lot of steps to uh, manufacture a vaccine um, it's it's maybe taking a little longer than people expected but as you heard the program manager has said we are expecting that before friday the first batch of vaccines will arrive and then the phased rollout looking at different high-risk groups of uh, uh, the population will be uh, targeted. 
Um, in terms of uh, um, the mutations, uh, Dr. Bediako can speak more to that, but it's, it's a random process and uh, it can happen at any time. But I think what is important is to know that the vaccine is on its way, it's coming. Uh, the first group is health workers. As you know, they are mm -hmm. the most high risk group. And then after them, we'll have people uh, older than 60 and uh, uh, those with uh, uh, health, uh, uh, health conditions. Condition. Mm -hmm. Yes, like hypertension, diabetes. Mm -hmm. So we, we are on track, I would say. This is first quarter 2021. So we are on track to get the vaccine and make sure that all mm -hmm. the high-risk people okay. are vaccinated. I'll, 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 I'll air a sample of the interview with Dr. Ampof, Amponsa later for your comments on the timelines. But here's a question from Jeffrey Intema. Jeffrey Intema, he asked, Hi, Bernard and team. I'd like to know how long it takes for a person's system to develop full immunity after taking the vaccine, uh, who will deal with that? Um, I can I can jump in. Yes. Um, so evidence suggests that um, people get immunity um, usually around 21, 14 to 21 days post vaccination. That is the current data that is available. So there is, you know, once you get your vaccine, um, your first dose, usually there appears to be immunity setting in somewhere around 21 days after that first shot. But of course, most of the vaccines we are getting in Ghana require two doses. So that your quote unquote, your immunity is not complete till you receive the second booster dose. Um, that dose, depending on the type of vaccine, can be anywhere from 21 days um, for the Pfizer, Moderna, 21 and 28 days. Um, AstraZeneca is a bit longer. It's four weeks actually all the way to 12 weeks um, where you'd have your second dose. Um, and so depending on the type of vaccines that are available, the duration of time, the time between the first and second uh, doses will vary. Um, however, it appears that even one dose does give you a measure of protection, like I said, after about 21 days. Mm. But the current data suggests that you need the second dose for the two-dose vaccines. You need the second dose to really have um, okay. full immunity. But I would add, and this goes to the previous question, that currently it suggests that the protection from the vaccine will last maybe 12 months to maybe 18 months. It's not lifelong protection as far as we can tell right now. Mm. So we do need to roll this out quickly um, because as, as Dr. Ahun said, um, actually the question, the question you had was right. The virus does mutate. And so we cannot afford to dilly-dally. If we wait too long to vaccinate the, the, the targeted sort of herd immunity threshold, mm. we risk having variants emerge that would not be, okay. that, would, that would not There's a quick the follow-up here from GOT in ACP. He says, hello, Bernard. What are the effects of not being able to take the second dose of the vaccines? Let me repeat the question from GOT at ACP. He says, uh, good evening, Bernard. What are the effects of not being able to take the second dose of the vaccine. In fact, yes. And then, um, he, well, he, I, I, yes, can you answer you that? you want me to speak to that as well, or Dr. Hun? Um, for me, I mean, yes, these vaccines are designed to be taken in two doses. They are, yeah. you know, if you could only take one dose, they would just give one dose. After all, two doses cost twice as much as one dose. So unfortunately, currently, I mean, there is a Johnson & Johnson vaccine currently in phase three trials that is a single dose. If that becomes available, that might be, you know, something that potentially we might switch to, or at least we would include in, in the vaccines available. But currently, the vaccines that are coming into Ghana, whether it is um, AstraZeneca or any of the vaccines that are currently licensed, mm. um, are two-dose vaccines. So you would need to get the second dose. However, as I said, the duration of time between your first and second dose, there can be some lag. So for AstraZeneca, even if it's 12 weeks later, it appears that it still actually gives you very good protection. But of course... During that intermittent period, you are protected, but not fully protected. So that is why I believe we've heard mask wearing, social distancing, all these things will have to be maintained. It's not like you get one shot and you are invincible. You'd have to keep those measures in place because you need to give your body time to make an immune response. But you also need to give your body, you need to have time to get your second dose mm. to be truly um, protected. Let me take it. Yeah. And, and yes. from the program point of view, it's very important that people 
um, know that the second dose is so important because if you look at our data, there's usually a dropout for vaccines which have multiple doses that people come for the first one. So for example, we give measles first and second dose. Measles first dose is above 90%. Measles second dose is about 72%. And so it's very, very important that people remember that you have not completed until you get the second dose. Then your protection is going to be much higher. But no vaccine is 100% effective. So it's very, very important that you get both doses for the vaccines that uh, Ghana is getting currently so that you are better protected and we can reach herd immunity faster. Thank you. This is still yeah. the point of view. We're talking to uh, three different people. Dr. Messi Ahun, who is uh, really a consultant for the global vaccine system. We also have Dr. Albedi Akun, who is a virologist and elder Dr. Brian Eduasari, a pharmacist and a member of the Church of Pentecost COVID-19 technical team. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we have more of your questions. Plus, the latest on Ghana's rollout, uh, Dr. Kwame Amponsa Chianu spoke to us earlier about this. We'll give you an update. Which vaccine is coming in? Where has it gotten to? And how will it be administered? Stay tuned. It is. See for yourself. Okay, so it's a photo. Look closer. Photos within photos. What about video? 8K video. Beyond cinema quality. So... You can pull portrait quality photos straight from video. But will it last the whole trip? Battery for the whole trip and the way back. This is different. Told you. Everything seems to get a little more expensive this time of the year. But keeping your family entertained doesn't have to. Now you can get a GoTV decoder with one month of GoTV Plus for the new low price of 89 CDs. That's 24-7 access to your favorite local stars. The biggest names in the game, international movies, and plenty to keep the kids busy. It's a deal you can't afford to miss, so don't delay. Get the limited time offer today. GoTV. Love it. Energy drink keeps you going. Available in major supermarkets and shops near you. Excessive drinking can be detrimental to your health. Not recommended for persons under 18 years, lactating mothers, pregnant women, and people sensitive to caffeine. This advert is FDA approved. back this is the point of view tonight we're trying to answer as many questions as we can with some uh, very knowledgeable people about the vaccines let me just read the latest story we have on citynewsroom.com written by marianne Ansa, february 22 a few minutes ago covid19 vaccines to arrive in ghana by close of week dr Amponsa Chiano. and the story reads ghana will be taking stock of the covid19 vaccine by close of this week this is contrary to early assurances given by government that the vaccines will arrive today monday february 22 Speaking on Eyewitness News, the program manager of the expanded program on immunization of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Kwame Amponsa Chiano, said the arrival of the vaccines have been delayed due to documentation and various requests we put, put in by different countries. He explained that the distribution of the first batch of the vaccine will primarily focus on a segmented population. According to him, this will include persons with underlying conditions and health workers. He explained that these persons need to be vaccinated first because they are at a higher risk of either contracting the virus or succumbing to it. He also said government officials will have access to the first doses of the vaccine to boost public confidence. The Food and Drugs Authority has approved the AstraZeneca and Sputnik V vaccines for use in Ghana. The government has also considered Moderna, Pfizer and Johnson & Johnson. And then it gives the details. What I also heard Dr. Achianu say was that this first batch that was coming in 
was coming in via COVAX, and it was the AstraZeneca India variant. Although initial reports had been that it was a Sputnik V. Uh, Dr. Messi Ahun, does it matter where the vaccine is coming from? And what, I mean, so for example, now that we are told that this batch that is in Copenhagen is coming, is the AstraZeneca version from India, it does it require a different sort of management versus, say, the, the, the Russian one? No, not at all. Um, uh, Serum Institute uh, is about, I think, the largest uh, vaccine manufacturer in the world. Most of the vaccines that Ghana uses come from Serum Institute. And uh, this uh, particular AstraZeneca vaccine, uh, uh, because of an arrangement between SII and AstraZeneca, they can produce the vaccine on large scale and at uh, a cheaper price. So this vaccine is reliable. And remember, the WHO has uh, gone through emergency use authorization for this vaccine. And then our own FDA has also gone through the process of reviewing the safety, uh, the efficacy of this vaccine. So as far as quality is concerned, we just want to assure the general public that this vaccine is safe. We are going to follow our cold chain protocol, make sure that as soon as the vaccine arrives, it is taken to the cold stores and right to the point of use. The vaccine that is going to be given is potent. And I want to use this opportunity to reiterate the fact that the, 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 the most important thing about immunization, as far as the programmatic aspect is concerned, is public trust. Because when trust is broken, that is when we have vaccine hesitancy. And traditionally, we have had high trust in the immunization program. I worked with Ghana when they introduced the pneumo, uh, pneumococcus vaccine and diarrhea vaccines in 2012. In fact, Ghana was the first country to introduce both vaccines at the same time. And we insisted that before those vaccines would be introduced, there should be some research to find out public perceptions about immunization. And it once again confirmed the high trust that the public has in the immunization program. So just a reminder to the general public that we have worked with you in a very transparent way to share information about the vaccines that we give. You have seen the impact of the vaccines in terms of the, the reduction in the incidence of vaccine preventable diseases in the country. So please, let's continue to talk so that we can be able to address your concern mm. and make sure that you are protected against COVID. Thank you. Thank you. Let me come to uh, Dr. Edu Asare. Doc, I've seen a question here which was addressed in your communique. Jones, a boy from last says, Good evening, Bernard. My fear is the speed with which this vaccine was produced. Coupled with the whole uncertainty surrounding the vaccine makes me a bit worried. Did you deal with this type of concern in, in your community? And what's your re response to Jones? Yes, um, we thought it, it was quite important to address because as um, um, Dr. Ahun has said, you would realize that the social perceptions on vaccination is very critical when you want to have a very successful vaccination program um, because the people must be, be able to voluntarily um, accept a vaccine. Okay, so we addressed this and what we said was that, of course, we know that the steps for developing a vaccine uh, goes through preclinical phase one, two, three, um, as well as regulatory steps after that. And then we also know that in as much as other vaccines have been developed and they have taken a long time to develop years this particular vaccine did not struggle for financing mm. um there was a collaboration among scientists all over the world um there was a lot of uh, volunteers who were available to actually test these vaccines on and then between the time that we had these um, trials done 
and then the time that we actually had manufacture, um, mm. it was a business case already, and therefore um, pharmaceutical companies could actually rise to the challenge quickly and then move to production. Okay, so um, these steps that have been outlined for vaccine development, we know about reports from regulatory agencies that talk about the fact that quality was not com compromised in this process. If anything, processes were run rather parallel so that we could short circuit the time for the okay. development. And these are some of the facts that we use to actually address okay. the myth about the speed. Um, it's a global concern. Um, it has implications for our 3.4 million members across the world. And we thought this is important to clarify. All right. I'm going to read a few quick comments and in, any of you can, can pick and choose what to say because there are quite a lot. So uh, just listen carefully and then decide which one you, you will choose. Uh, good evening, Bernard. When we buy paracetamol, we can see the ingredients given on it and can make your research. Is it the same with vaccines? Enough education is needed with regards to this R MRNF vaccine thing. Other specialists avoided concerns about its relation to DNA. So that's a question without a name. Bernard, as for me, I would only take the one which is in the same box as the one President Akufado would take. <laughs> but to take a different one, dear, and can name trip Basim Poye. <laughs> you don't add your name. Good evening, team. Please ask your guests if vaccines have any allergies. If vaccines have any allergies. Somebody should take note of that. Vaccines have any allergies. Richfield from Takradi wants to know, can asthmatics take the vaccine? Can asthmatics take the vaccine? Okay, so let me, let me pause here. Doc, Dr. Bediako, let me take you first. Any, any quick reaction to what I've read so far? Um, yes, I would say, you know, the idea about whether there are any adverse reactions. These are things that are followed up very carefully. So, yes, every once in a while, you will have somebody who may have an allergic reaction. People have allergic reactions to any medication, right? Even paracetamol. There are people who react to paracetamol. Mm. Um, the, the key is that for the vast, vast, vast majority of people, there's no reaction. Um, and the few reactions that do happen are, are documented and then are, are, are noted. And if anything needs to be done, that will be done. So, like I said, these vaccines coming to Ghana have already been administered in other countries. Well, right now we're looking almost 200 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines have been administered around the world. These are the same vaccines that are coming to Ghana. It's not any new vaccine. These are the same vaccines. And in the large, out of these 200 million doses, there have been very, very few reports of any sort of negative reaction. So mm. with any medical, with any medicine, any drug, there's always a risk that there might be a small fraction of people who might have some reaction. You, people react to peanuts, but we are not saying that in Katikwai is bad for you. We are just recognizing that if you have a peanut allergy, you don't take peanuts. Okay. Now, allergies or reactions to vaccines are much less rare than peanut allergies. Peanut allergies are one of the most common. Okay, what about the asthmatics question? Can asthmatic... The asthmatic question, I don't think, um, there is no evidence currently that the vaccine has any undue if, um, reactions in asthmatic. In fact, being an asthmatic is an underlying condition. So you actually, you should, if you are, you are an asthmatic, you should be lining up to get the vaccine before anybody else. Okay. Um, it actually should be the opposite. If you are an asthmatic, you should be trying to get the vaccine because that is considered an underlying condition and you don't want to get COVID. So then we um, prioritize. Let, let me take two right. questions from the Volta region. And Dr. Messi, maybe this will be yours, Dr. Ahun. Charles from Sogakope wants me to ask if we are going to be tested before we take the vaccine. And if there's any consequence for an infected person taking the vaccine. Then Obed from Ho Agonokoji, or Anagokoji, sorry, Anagokoji, says, Good evening, Bernard. Do I have a choice to accept or reject the vaccine under our current laws? So, i.e., is it compulsory or can I opt out? And then somebody wants to know if we, we should be tested. And if an infected person takes the virus, what happens? Dr. Ahun, any comments on this? Yeah. Um, do you need to be tested before you take the vaccine? No. Um, and, in fact, I'm not sure what the person means by tested. You mean tested for COVID positivity? Yes, for COVID, for COVID. Uh, no, you don't need to be tested before you take the vaccine. We are just going to use the risk. We have uh, segmented the population according to risk. 
And that is the way that we are going to use to target different groups of people to be vaccinated. And then the other question. The, the other question is, do I have a choice to accept or reject the vaccine under our current laws? Is it compulsory to take the vaccine? I understand that under the public health law, uh, we want to ensure that people see this as a positive thing. That's something that is going to protect them against severe disease or possible death. So we want people to line up voluntarily because that is the best way to do public health. Coercion um, is not helpful as far as public health is concerned. And I believe that uh, the second wave has actually shown us that we are not as invincible as we thought we were. And uh, more people are wearing masks. And uh, so we encourage each and every person. So uh, please, the public health law is there. But I believe that the Minister of Health, and I actually held, uh, heard the Minister of Health designate say that we want to, as much as possible, ensure that people voluntarily come forward and see this as a positive thing rather than to use coercion and laws to make this happen. It hasn't worked in other places, and we don't want to use it in A Ghana. few more questions. Good evening, Bernard. Please, I hear the vaccine can cause our men to become impotent. How true is this? No. Second question. Okay, you want to answer that directly? <laughs> <laughs> no, there is. In fact, that, that, that rumor has been said about so many vaccines. People said the uh, tetanus vaccine causes infertility, and we are trying to uh, make our women uh, uh, infertile. No, it's not true. Straight and simple forward. No. Okay. And actually, I would add, I mm -hmm. would add that COVID has been shown to actually cause erectile dysfunction. So if you don't get a vaccine and instead you get COVID, you might have problems. There. Is, so is that actually true, though? Does COVID cause erectile dysfunction? It does. It, there is evidence that in some men, yes, they have, they have suffered, at least post-COVID, for a while. It does not appear to be permanent. Okay. I think Let's deal with this question. Death. Shady from Pusiga will whites, I think it's referring to Western, or will whites accept any COVID vaccine from Ghana? Two, Food and Drugs Board couldn't produce any vaccine. How were they able to know that a vaccine produced by Russia is safe? <laughs> Shady from Pusiga. <laughs> Who's going to answer that? Oh. <laughs> Ghana, Ghana does not produce any vaccine. So, I mean, uh, asking the question whether the whites will accept vaccines from Ghana is a moot point. And uh, there, there are laid down processes for the FDA to approve vaccines. And so the FDA followed those laid down processes. And in fact, I understand that the emergency uh, authorization, Ghana FDA, it's level three maturity. And uh, worldwide, there are only five countries with level three maturity. So Ghana's FDA is a very high ranking FDA. And I understand that even for the emergency authorization that WHO did, Ghana is represented at the global level as part of the emergency okay. uh, authorization. So um, I don't think that uh, our, our FDA is highly qualified they do meticulous work if you go to their website you will get the information on how they go through this process all right so we can be assured that this is a tried and tested proce procedure that they are using to ensure that we have safe vaccines in ghana thank you we'll take another short break there's lots more questions coming in we'll see how many we can put through before the show and stay with us It is. See for yourself. Okay, so it's a photo. Look closer. Photos within photos. What about video? 8K video. Beyond cinema quality. So... You can pull portrait quality photos straight from video. But will it last the whole trip? Battery for the whole trip and the way back. This is different. Told you. Because you 
pay attention because you know more than one angle and see more than one opportunity. We bring you build a bet, multiple legs as a single bet on one game. Raising the odds and elevating your experience. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Bet responsibly, not for persons below 18 years. Welcome back. We are still on the point of view. My guest, Dr. Messi Ahun, Dr. Yalbedi Akun, and Elder Dr. Brian Eduasari. Now, we have just five minutes to go. I'm going to read a few questions, and I will urge my guests to probably give their answers in a minute or less so we can put as many, possible as, as, many as possible. Bernard, I want to know the measures put in place to deal with complications which may arise as a result of taking the vaccine. Anyway, our politicians should take the first batch of the vaccine. This is coming in from Maui West Akuse. Uh, good evening. I'm Randy from North Kanishi. Most of the vaccine doses require two jabs to reach maximum effectiveness. I'd, li I'd like to know if any complication would arise from taking just one jab and ignoring the second dose when the time is due. Um, more questions. Bernard, ask your guest if we take the first vaccine and government delays in bringing the second one, what happens? Paul from Kasua. Um, to inspire and instill confidence in citizens, let the president, the minister of health, and our Ghana Health Service officials be the first to take the vaccine. Paul in a Shalibotre. Bernard, so from what I have heard, it means that after the vaccine, you will still have the virus in your system, but it won't hurt you. Is that the case? Okay, let me see if you can answer some of these questions. So many are coming in at the end of the show. So let me, let me start with uh, Dr. Bedia. Any quick comments on some of the last questions you've heard? Um, in terms of the safety, um, the FDA is going to be tracking any adverse events. So... Um, every vaccine, every vaccine will be tracked to see if they have any adverse effects and events, and those will be those will be the FDA will be in charge of that, working with the Ghana Health Service, um, as they do for all vaccinations, I believe. Um, in terms of if you take the vaccine, yes, we do want to get a second dose. Like we've said before, you are really only fully protected. The vaccine is only fully efficacious if you get the second dose. We are hoping that the government will be able to bring in the doses in time. As I said, with some of them, like AstraZeneca, the gap can be a bit long. So we have a little bit of a window to work with. Mm. Um, and then in terms of whether the virus stays in your system, a vaccine is preventative. So usually the, what the vaccine is meant to do is to prevent, once you have the vaccine, you have immunity, and the, vaccine, the virus does not, well, in some cases, will not infect you at all. Mm. Uh, but certainly, currently, the vaccines have been, have been validated that your risk of disease, of sickness, is reduced. So it's likely that, in fact, very few people actually get infected. Um, but because of the nature of this, this timeline, many of these vaccines were evaluated based on their ability to avert severe symptoms and death. Mm. So certainly, you will, you, will, you know, the vaccine protects you from dying or having severe disease. There is evidence that it also reduces the likelihood that you are infected. But we haven't had enough time to see that. So it, some people may still, quote unquote, be asymptomatic, um, but they would, not have any, they, would, they, would, they would not have any symptoms and would certainly be protected, which is all the more reason why we have to vaccinate a very large number of people okay. so that we protect uh, large swaths of the population. Dr. Ahun, your, your closing comments. Yeah, I mean, uh, I believe that there are plans to have... Uh, um, politicians uh, take the lead, uh, so um, that should not be a problem. Um, they, they, they will take the example and uh, show that uh, they believe in the vaccines. Mm. And uh, my final comment is about the trust that the Ministry of Health, the Ghana Health Service is open to, uh, if you have concerns, go to the nearest health uh, facility and discuss and uh, we will continue to work with the public to show that this vaccine is uh, safe, mm. is uh, efficacious. And if you take it, you protect not only yourself, okay. but uh, give opportunity to raise that immunity and protect the whole community. Dr. Edouard, so sorry, you. final comment. Will the chairman of the Church of Pentecost take the job? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Um, not to commit him in public, but... Uh, we have indication that um, uh, the, the leadership of the church would show that um, example 
um, and are ready to actually take a bus. And, you know, from the church's perspective, and I believe from the Christian perspective as well, uh, the bus can be seen or vaccination of this nature can be seen in the spirit of protecting your neighbor, you know, because you vaccinate and then you prevent infection mm. and then you actually are protecting the, the, the people who have the um, high risk groups and all that. So you okay. are saving lives as a Christian principle, which we, we, we are projecting. Um, we all are right, we'll, we'll have to leave it here. <laughs> we'll have to leave it here. Thank all you right. so much, uh, Elder Dr. Brian Eduasa, a member of the Church of Pentecost Technical COVID team, Dr. Albedi Akun, research fellow, Wakbib, Dr. Messi Ahun, uh, immunization uh, consultant for, 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 for the uh, World Health Organization. My name is Bernard Avle. I'm sure we, we will have to answer more questions later on, but thank you for indulging us in this first part. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.